Hey guys, this is Rich, and welcome to part two of our technical overview video for the brand new MTW. So let's go ahead and look at the takedown. All right, so let's go ahead and tear this down. To fully disassemble, we're going to pop out both front and back body pins. Again, exactly like your standard AR. Pop them both out, upper and lower receiver will separate just like that. At this point, we can unplug the battery. Set it aside. It uses a standard 7.4 volt battery. So let's go ahead and take a little bit closer look at our lower receiver. If we flip it up, you can see our electronics are integrated inside. At the front, we have our switches for our empty mag detection, which we'll talk about when we get to the magazines later. Another switch for the bolt release. Here at the back, you can see you have your two springs here are your contacts between upper and lower receiver. To remove the electronics, we're going to flip the gun over, use a small tool to press the trigger pin out past the board. You don't want to push it all the way past the trigger, as that will release the trigger. If we flip the gun back over, we're going to need a 3mm Allen key. You can access it through the hammer, hammer pin hole at the front to remove the screw holding the electronics in. this point, our electronics will pop right out. If we want to disassemble the trigger completely, we would just pop this pin all the way out. But we're not going to do that right now. Removal of the buffer tube, castle nut, sling plate, and the trigger guard, as well as the magazine catch, are all identical to a real steel firearm. So we're not going to go over all of that here. If you need assistance with that, there are plenty of videos online showing how to do those steps. We are going to go ahead and remove the grip and talk about what we did with the grip. To remove the grip, we're going to need a 3 16 Allen wrench. And we'll remove the screw holding it on, again, exactly like the real thing. You'll notice that we have our spring here. This is interchangeable with any standard AR spring. And our detent as well is real steel spec. With the grip removed, we can now remove our selector switch. If you're using the standard selector switch, then you could just pull it straight out at this point. We've installed the upgraded ambidextrous option, so we'll need to go to the back side and remove that screw. And now our selector switch comes right out. This has been modified slightly from real steel spec, so it is a proprietary design. A quick note about the design of the selector switch. This is the ambidextrous version. It comes with two different paddle lengths. These paddles can be installed on either end of the selector to meet your needs. When disassembling, always remove the electronics first and then your selector switch. And when you're installing, install your selector switch first and then your electronics to avoid damaging your the switches on your electronics board. Taking a closer look at this grip, you'll see that there is an additional hole drilled here. That is the hole for your airline. There's similarly a hole in the bottom of the receiver that allows your airline to go through, or if you're running one of our other stocks where the battery won't fit in the buffer tube, you can run your battery in your grip. Making virtually any standard AR grip work on this platform is actually quite simple. We'll be offering a drilling guide to make it very easy, or if you just want to do it yourself, you can simply install the grip of your choice mark the location through the upper receiver, and then go back and drill your hole. You'll find it's easiest to work with a 3 8 inch drill bit in this location if you don't have the drilling guide, because if you go to the half inch, which is what we'll use on our production version, you'll actually cut in a little bit to the sides here, and it's difficult to drill that hole without the drilling guide. Half inch is what we recommend for easier access, but if you're just doing it without the drilling guide, 3 eighths can work. That's what we actually have on this prototype. Let's go ahead and reassemble. To do this, we're going to want to start by placing the electronics wire underneath where we're going to install our selector barrel. This will allow us to run the wires underneath, which protects it from pinching more. We can now install the back paddle if we're using the ambidextrous. If not, we can skip this step. Now let's go ahead and reinstall the grip to get, every, get that held in place. We'll drop our detent, point it in first, 
in its hole. Our D10 spring can go in the hole in the magazine. Put everything together sideways, it won't prevent either one from falling out. Next, we're going to take our screw and go ahead and reattach the grip. Again, this is a 3 sixteenths. All right. The next step is the only part of the process that is a little bit tricky. I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the electronics board. Now, we want this wire, in addition to going underneath the selector, we want it to run, if we can, underneath the trigger. So we're just going to use a little Allen wrench to loop it underneath the trigger. There we go. All right, so we got that. We're going to set our selector to auto so that we don't bump into our selector switch. And this will just drop down in position just like so. Now we can go ahead and push our trigger pin all the way through. We'll go the board around as needed to get it to go through. All right. Once we get that pin installed, we want to press the board as far forward as it will go. Now, reinstalling this screw is the part that is a little bit tricky. But what we're going to do is we're going to take the screw, grab it with our needle nose pliers. Again, this screw needs a 2.5 millimeter Allen key. It's definitely trickier to do on camera because I can't see it. There we go. And again, pull that board forward to line it up. And we're all set. See, not too bad. Make sure we're not pinching any wires. Tighten it down. Again, keeping in mind you're holding down electronics, so there's no reason to over tighten it and crush the board. All right, we're all set. One more word on the lower receiver. The trigger that comes is actually adjustable. So we can't show you this feature on uh, this prototype version as we discussed, but it will have a screw on the back side of the trigger that you'll use a one millimeter Allen key and be able to actually adjust the trigger travel to your desired travel length. So let's go ahead and set aside the, uh, the lower and we'll take a look at the upper. So before we start pulling apart our upper receiver here, I want to talk a little bit about the design here, why this is so important. One of the, anybody that's been around HPA for any length of time is familiar with alignment issues. One of the things with AEGs is since the gearbox is attached to the lower receiver, and it can move around a little bit in the lower receiver, and the hop-up is attached to the upper receiver, and it can move around a little bit in the upper receiver, you end up running into issues where your gearbox basically doesn't line up with your hop-up. And since the gearbox doesn't line up with the hop-up, your cylinder doesn't line up with the hop-up. And that causes all sorts of issues. And people spend tons and tons of time uh, trying to correct those issues and, and get them tuned just perfectly. When we say that the, the MTW has intrinsically perfect alignment, what we're, why we're saying that is now instead of your system being attached to your lower, your system is actually held perfectly in line with your hop-up by the upper receiver because your cylinder here just slides right inside your upper receiver as does your outer and inner barrels. So a uh, very important design feature there. It keeps everything perfectly aligned which makes a big difference to the performance of the system and especially your, your, the accuracy of the system. All right, so we've swapped over to our fresh, uncrushed receiver. And again, just to remind everybody, all we've done at this point, really, we went through the lower already, but all we've actually done, if you were just going to the upper receiver, is to pop out our two body pins. So to get to this point, we're gonna pop the body pins out. And there we go. No tools so far. Okay, I used this to push it out, but I could have used my fingers. Now, let's disassemble the upper receiver. This was one of the most important design features. We wanted to design a, a wireless connection between upper and lower receiver uh, that was robust. We didn't want to use like a standard pin design or something like that because pins bend. Uh, the copper or brass tabs that they use have a tendency to bend and break. It's, it's not good. We wanted something very robust. So we designed this in-house, used springs, so very robust there and just simple screws on the far side is your contact points. And all you're going to do 
to disassemble is just pop it out and then you can unplug it from the back of the solenoid, run your wires back through. Now we're gonna just pop out our front retaining clip and at this point we just need to get the air line out. Now, don't freak out. All we're gonna do is rotate it like that and pull it straight through. Don't worry about it kinking. You essentially can't destroy this line. It's a very, very strong line. It doesn't, and it doesn't kink. You can bend it right in half. You could squeeze it with pliers, do all you want. It's just gonna, it's just gonna pop back. Nothing to worry there. That pops right out. Now we've got our cylinder out. Uh, the internals of the cylinder are same as our standard, but it is a different nozzle and different cylinder. And we've updated the design of the valve housing. Um, this will be standard on all units, MTW or AEG. Going forward, this valve housing has this cutout here which gives more room for our line to bend when it's installed in the MTW. So we'll set that aside. And now we can get to our pop-up design. You'll notice this just slides right out. This is why we have the two-part design. If you had the feed tube as part of the hop-up, you wouldn't be able to slide it out like that. Our feed tube then will just pop right out, and there you go. To tear it down to deal with the hop-up or whatever you want to do, that's all you're going to have to do. It's very simple, very straightforward. Now let's take a look at the rail. The mounting interface here for our rail is actually a proprietary design that we developed specifically for this platform. We wanted something with a very streamlined design without lots of visible hardware. You notice our, our fastening screws are hidden. This uses a three millimeter Allen key. We'll just loosen these up. And at this point, we can separate the rail. Now, our barrel nut is a good solid piece of steel there. We just have this hand tight so I can pop this free. But on yours, you'll want to Grab that in a vise or an adjustable wrench, or if you happen to have a one and an eighth wrench on hand, that'll work too. So taking a look at this barrel design, you can see it's very similar to a real steel barrel, if you're familiar with that. Uh, same indexing pin, all that kind of stuff. This is uh, CNC 6061T6 aluminum, anodized. So uh, there will not be a crush washer on the production version. So uh, let's talk about um, how you would use a aftermarket hop-up. We got a pro win here just for demonstration purposes. And basically this is how you would install it. Instead of installing it uh, from the back, you're going to install, install it through here. We'll drop up in and then you can, sorry, install, install the outer barrel over the inner barrel like so. And you can, uh, that way it lets you use your aftermarket options if that's what you want to do. Not quite as handy from a maintenance standpoint, which is why we designed it the way we did for our stock hop-up, but it works and gives you the option for upgradability. So let's go ahead and reassemble the upper. We can install our barrel, aligning the indexing pin with the indexing notch. Put on our barrel nut, and you'll want to tighten that down with a vise or with uh, an adjustable wrench. We can take our feed tube and the way this installs is you're going to want to angle it down towards the front of the gun and pop it up in position, just like that. Now your hop-up can install the back of the receiver, just slide right in. Your cylinder can slide in after it. Now on the production version, again, this is a prototype. We have this little piece added on here. There will actually be a notch machined that will fit this um, fit this clip, which makes it much easier. This, the prototype is a little bit, a little bit tedious to get in there. So, airline can go back through, just like so. Just pull it right on through. Again, you're going to want to pay attention to which side of the airline you put the wiring on. It runs a lot better if you put it on the side of the airline that it wants to go on. Plug our wiring into the back of the solenoid. Snap our attachment point in place. If you have any extra wire sticking out here, you'll just want to push it in. There shouldn't be uh, on the production version, but this prototype, the wiring is a little bit on the long side. So, there's our upper. We can just stick our rail back on. Again, a three millimeter Allen key. There she is.
To complete the reassembly, we'll go ahead and plug in a battery. I find it works best to slide the battery in first and the wiring after it. Make sure both of our pins are popped out. The wiring can be run down through the grip. And you'll find that it works best if we set the back end in, keeping it pressed back up against the joint here, and then just pivot the front end down. And then we can snap both of our pins in position. And there it is. And we'll pop this out just to show you the basic disassembly. It pops off right like that. You can access anything you need to inside. You can actually remove your barrel, hop up, all that kind of stuff without removing the upper from the lower if you want. And we're all set.